Alrighty, well, hello, sinners. How are ya? On today's installment of the Letterboard of Truth, our quote of the day is... This is Willy Wonky. It really is. Willy Wonka, one of the most iconic characters in children's media. Not quite. Definitely not him. Yeah, that's the one. You know Wonka, the eccentric rich guy who lures five random children and their families to explore his chocolate factory as they're slowly being picked off one by one. And on top of that, you have a bunch of tiny men in jumpsuits engaging in song and dance while you're sucked up a tube. While I'm sure many of us would jump at the opportunity to sail down a chocolate river, I'm not sure how well Wonka's chocolate factory would work in the real world. For one, it sounds like a health and safety nightmare, and I'm not convinced that Willy Wonka isn't exploiting the Oompa Loompas. After all, there's no such thing as an ethical billionaire. Class struggles aside, would you be surprised to find out that when someone tried to bring Wonka's factory to life, it was a complete and utter disaster? Well, that's what happened at the infamous Willie's Chocolate Experience in Glasgow, Scotland, which has gone absolutely viral over the past couple weeks. Willie's Chocolate Experience was so bad, it has been dubbed the Fire Festival for Kids. And in case you don't remember, Fire Festival was a fraudulent music festival that overpromised on everything. So let's find out how Willie's Chocolate Experience turned into TanaCon for toddlers. Before you go and throw your own kid-friendly Fire Festival, don't you want to smell good? If so, you should check out today's sponsor. Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month. I am so indecisive when it comes to what perfume I wear each day, and because of this, I don't want to invest a lot of money into certain fragrances only to not like them, which is why I recommend Scentbird so much. They offer affordable and flexible subscription plans, and even better, you can skip or cancel your subscription at any time. Scentbird has over 600 perfumes and colognes in stock, along with a lot of unisex options. They carry big name brands like Gucci, Prada, and Versace, as well as indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. This month, I received three new fragrances from Scentbird. First, I got Daisy Oh So Fresh by Marc Jacobs. It's a light, flowery, and fruity scent. Basically, if I were to bottle the spring season and make it a fragrance, this would be it. Next is Seven Summers by Dime. This scent has notes of vanilla lavender, champagne, warm sugar, juicy pear, and coconut cream. What I love about Seven Summers is that it's a sweet fragrance, but the sweetness isn't too overbearing. The various notes complement each other very nicely. Finally, I have French Defense Black Cherry Amber by Mind Games. With notes of cherry, geranium Madagascar, rose absolute, amber, and cedarwood, this is definitely a scent I'd use for a night out on the town. It's a warm, woodsy fragrance that I absolutely love. Some of these scents cost up to $500 up front. That's a huge investment for a perfume or cologne you may wind up disliking. But if you use Scentbird, you'll receive a 30-day supply so you can test different fragrances before committing to a full-size bottle. Normally, Scentbird costs $17 a month, but by using my code AnnaMarie55 off, you'll get 55% off your first box, which will come to $7. So again, make sure to click the link below and use code AnnaMarie55OFF for 55% off your first month with Scentbird. Once again, thank you to Scentbird for helping me and my sinners smell fresh all day, every day. Now let's get back to your scheduled programming. Without sugarcoating things, what unfolded at Willie's Chocolate Experience and afterwards was terrible, disappointing, and avoidable. Since hindsight is 2020, it's hard not to see how the writing was on the wall before anyone even stepped on the premises based on the event's website alone. On the homepage, it promises a place where chocolate dreams become reality. Step into the magical realm of Willie's Chocolate Experience, a universe where confectionery dreams are brought to life. 
explore an array of themed rooms like the Enchanted Garden and the Vision Room and Lemonade Gallery, each offering unique and delightful surprises. Not only will you witness the magic of chocolate, but you'll also have the chance to taste it. Prepare for a journey with delicious treats, enchanting adventures, and moments worth capturing. Be sure to get your tickets for this extraordinary experience. Sounds intriguing. Almost like it's too good to be true, which it was obviously, but we'll get into that. When I read this for the first time, I couldn't help but notice how soulless the writing was. Lots of buzzwords are being used and the offerings sound exciting, but extremely vague. Come to find out that this was all written by AI. In fact, the entire website was made with AI. It becomes even more evident when you look at the artwork. For instance, let's take a look at the Enchanted Garden. Your journey begins in an enchanted garden with giant sweets, vibrant blooms, mysterious looking sculptures, and magical surprises that add an extra layer of wonder to your chocolatey experience. They're really abusing the space bar here. Navigate through peculiar but enchanting garden collecting delicious beans of all colors, shapes, and sizes. Who knows, perhaps you might be able to grow your very own enchanting garden. How fun. Oh yeah, the grammar and spelling are abysmal and we're gonna look at bigger offenses in just a sec. One thing I notice in a lot of AI art is that while it might be detailed and pleasing to the eye at first, there's always something a little off. Like in this photo, a lot of the characters look very smudged and this poor rabbit straight up has four eyes. And I'm not even gonna acknowledge the jelly beans humping under the waterfall. If that hasn't convinced you this is all AI, let's move on to the Imagination Lab. Or perhaps you're interested in the Twilight Tunnel, which includes dim tight, twittering, energemic sounds, and even unexpected twits. Maybe you're looking for some enchanting entertainment like catgacating, karchi tons, exarsurdre, lollipops. I I don't even know what they're trying to say with this one. And finally, a pass a dice of sweet teats. We can all use a sweet teat or two every now and then. Even though this was all made by AI, somehow they still put more effort into the website than the actual event. So let's break down what happened at Willie's Chocolate Experience and boy, was it an experience? Instead of a whimsical place where chocolate dreams become reality that the organizers promised, attendees actually walked into this and this and this and this and this. This is genuinely the embodiment of what you ordered online versus what you got. <laughs> a father who took his family to the event posted this on Facebook afterwards. What an absolute shambles of an event. Willy Wonka experience ran by House of Illuminati in Glasgow. This was described as the full Willy Wonka experience with chocolate fountains, etc., and a great day out for the kids. Took two minutes to get through, then see a queue of people surrounding the guy running it complaining. Company started in November 2023 and is nothing more than an absolute con. The kids received two jelly babies and a quarter of a can of Bars Limeade. Wouldn't recommend this company for anything. Event has now been shut down and canceled for today. Very professional. Never seen anything like it was definitely an experience for the bargain price of 35 pounds each. Well worth the trip to Glasgow. They have now shut the doors of the event. That's right. People paid 44 US dollars per ticket for this sh show and the price didn't even include a strawberry mug. So for 44 bucks a person, they got a sip of lemonade and two whole jelly beans. You know, one jelly bean would have been fine, but two jelly beans, that's awfully generous. To put this in perspective, if a family of four went to this experience, it would have cost them almost 180 US dollars, not including travel and food, which they definitely need afterwards because they only got two jelly beans each. I mean, 
This is just sad. It looks like a funeral brunch. I just love how these images flow seamlessly together. Like, did they set this whole thing up while blindfolded? Not only did ticket holders have this immersive scenery to take in, but the organizers also hired actors to play various characters in the WCU, that's the Wonka Cinematic Universe, to make people feel like they were there. Most notably, this queen dressed as an Oompa Loompa became an overnight sensation on social media. People were saying her station looked like a meth lab, and to be fair, this thing in the middle does look like one of Walter White's contraptions. I almost expected to see someone snorting pixie stick dust in the background. Other pictures and videos of this actress began to spread on Twitter, and you can tell she's really trying her best to put on a smile for the kitties and make the most of this absolute train wreck. I know this term has been beaten to death over the past year or so, but I can't help it. She is mother. She is the mother I never had. The organizers also took creative liberty and added a new character to the WCU called The Unknown. Who's supposed to be an evil chocolate maker? They're just begging for a cease and desist at this rate. What is that? It's the unknown. I don't know if this will make me sound bad, but my favorite part was when the children went from excited to horrified as soon as the unknown popped out. Unfortunately, that was very funny and you can't take that away from me. The unknown also went viral and some users even made fan cams and fan art of the unknown and the unknown with the Oompa Loompa, all from a couple clips and photos of these actors. It's kind of wholesome, actually. For a bit, people were trying to figure out who played the unknown. A few people on TikTok came forward as the unknown for clout, but eventually it was verified to be a 16-year-old girl named Felicia. Hello, it's Felicia, and this is my official unknown face review. So, yeah. ba 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 Hello, I'm Felicia, I'm 16, and I am the unknown. First of all, I am a ghetto, sorry to disappoint. Um, second of all, this is actually my real hair. It is not a wing. As you'd expect, people saw right through the Party City decorations and limited refreshments, and they were rightfully pissed. Some attendees even called the police, which led to the organizers shutting down the whole event midway through. Glasgow City Council's Trading Standards Department, which ensures businesses are complying with the law, also received a complaint. However, the most outspoken person throughout all this chaos has been Willy Wonka himself, AKA Scottish actor Paul Connell, who played Wonka at Willie's Chocolate Experience. Hello everyone, my name is Paul Connell and I was one of the actors employed to play Willy Wonka at the Wonka's Chocolate Experience fiasco that happened uh, in Glasgow this weekend. Um, I'm gonna be poking a little bit of fun at the event, but I wanted to say before I start that I feel for anyone who bought tickets to this event, um, people who are expecting a magical chocolate experience uh, and got me in a top hat in a dirty warehouse in Glasgow. Um, people who wanted Timothy Chalamet and got Timothy Charlatan. After joking that he gives major Oompa Loompa energy, Paul claimed that he got cast only two days before the event and was told he needed to memorize a 15-page script written by AI by the following day. I got cast as the part on the Thursday um and um, was told that i needed to learn the script for the friday so i said no problem send it over the script was 15 pages monologue pretty much of ai generated gibberish paul even recited some of this gobbledygook for us so i'll give you one of the lines from the script uh, i'm not going to do the willy wonka voice because i think i've embarrassed myself enough uh, over the last few days um but one of my favorite lines was, there is a man who lives here. His name is not known. So we call him the unknown. The unknown is an evil chocolate maker 
who lives in the walls. What? <laughs> you truly can't make this sh up. Only AI can, apparently. He confirmed that the guests were only offered a shot of store-bought lemonade and one jelly bean, compared to the two jelly beans someone alleged they got earlier. Maybe they snuck one. I would for 44 friggin' bucks. And worst of all, there was no chocolate. Having chocolate in your chocolate factory is the bare minimum. Out of everything you could have possibly fucked up, which was everything, at least have some goddamn chocolate to hang out. That's like Chick-fil-A not selling chicken. More like that's not Chick-fil-A without homophobia. Was the entire budget spent on that sad looking bouncy house? My goodness. So you know what? I take back what I said earlier about them being generous because they're not. Paul continued by saying that he and the other actors were concerned not only about the lack of decor and special events that were previously promised, but also the likelihood that they were not going to get paid. And despite this, they still tried to put on a good show for the families that came. After Paul's TikToks blew up, he did an AMA on r slash ask UK, which by the end received a thousand comments. But in this thread, Paul offered even more insight on what went down. Someone asked, were staff working the event allowed to have a jelly bean and quarter glass of Tesco lemonade on their breaks? Nope, I ate a meal deal in my car and thought about where I went wrong in life. Aw, Paul. Another person asked, I need to know more about the unknown. What was the unknown supposed to do slash say? The unknown's plot line was that they were trying to steal my recipe for the anti-graffiti gobstopper all the script said was that it was for their own unclean purposes. Whatever that means. But most importantly, did you get paid? Not yet. I didn't even get a single jelly bean or a quarter glass of lemonade. And that is still true. As of the day I'm recording, the actors have still not been paid or given a piece of chocolate for that matter. No one got chocolate that day, in fact. Did any of the parents direct their anger at you? No, everyone has genuinely been lovely and understood that we were not behind it, but just actors who were tricked into thinking this was something bigger. I am putting on an event for free that is only available to the children who came and were disappointed. We are working with a lot of people. I'll link the whole thread below if you want to read the rest. A couple other actors from Willie's Chocolate Experience also came forward on TikTok and their stories were very similar to Paul's. And that includes the People's Princess, the sad Oompa Loompa, Kirsty Patterson. But I feel like I need to have my say of what's went on because I think I've got every right to. But since I've became a global... Anyway, I do see the humour in it. It is really funny. Um, um, my friends and my family do are We all are laughing about it. I laugh with the other actors about it, about how bizarre this actually has went. On my end of things, I've only seen positive comments about Kirsty, but apparently she's been receiving a lot of negativity too, which isn't surprising because the internet is the internet. But really, can y'all behave just this one time? Please? The comments are savage. Very, very savage. And not very nice. I think people need to learn to be a bit more kind and realize that people are just human beings and I'm just a normal 30 year old woman from Glasgow. Um, who did a job that was the worst job, acting job I've ever done in my life. I love my job. Um, I really do. I do other stuff. Um, it's just the whole thing's mental, to be honest with you. Thankfully, Kirsty's managed to capitalize on her 15 seconds of fame, and now she has a cameo page. Hello, everyone. It is the Scottish Oompa Loompa from the Glaswegian Willy Wonka experience, and I am here to do your personalized videos and all your requests for you and the actual outfit of the event, but it's the first time it's been shown. I mean, you gotta respect the hustle, especially when you consider the fact that she still hasn't gotten paid yet. She and Paul were also invited onto a couple news networks to talk about everything that went down. I got given the one pound, pound land, inappropriate impa outfits. Right. And then by that point, I tried it on and we were all just laughing, I was like, contemplating do I just walk out this this is just too much like I can't deal with this and then <laughs> what happened is the other actors were amazing and 
I didn't want to let them down, but then I started seeing the kids coming in and they were all dressed up and they were oh. so cute. And I just didn't want to let them down, honestly. I just didn't, so... They were all excited, They were presumably. so excited, yeah, and, like... It was just such a shame. I feel like this is Wonka meets Harry Potter and you've got Voldemort <laughs> jumping out of the wall. Like, it's a crossover we probably didn't need. <laughs> Finally, I'm sure you're all wondering, what's happened to the unknown? Well, on March 4th, it was announced that a horror movie based on the unknown is in the works. Caledonia Pictures previews the film gearing up for production and a late 2024 release follows a renowned illustrator and his wife who are haunted by the tragic death of their son, Charlie. Desperate to escape their grief, the couple leaves the world behind for the remote Scottish highlands where an unknowable evil awaits them. It's the unknown! <laughs> uh, yeah, talk about jumping the shark. I don't think it's the smartest thing to make a movie based on one meme people will probably forget about by the end of this video, with all due respect to the unknown, of course. I'd be surprised if the film came to fruition, truthfully. But seeing how much of a disaster Willie's chocolate experience was, you gotta ask, who is capable of royally f***ing up to this extent? What madman didn't have chocolate in his chocolate factory? According to the official website and several articles, the organization behind the scam was the House of Illuminati. But calling the House of Illuminati an organization this whole time has been a bit of a stretch on my end because really, it's only a one-man show run by an interesting character named Billy Cole. Now look, if your company is affiliated with the Illuminati, I would assume that any event or project you coordinate has the Illuminati budget. Like, I'm sure Beyonce and Katy Perry are more than capable of coughing up a few bucks for full glasses of lemonade, you know? And before the Looney Tune conspiracy theorists flood my comments, I should mention that I don't think Beyonce, Katy Perry, or anyone is in the Illuminati because I don't believe it's a real thing. Or am I being forced to deny its existence? Ooh. Anyways, Billy's company is fairly new. It only opened in November 2023, according to gov.uk, which is a public sector information website, so I'm not doxing him. However, not only is Billy a skilled event planner, interior designer, and businessman, he's also an author to 17 books, all released in the span of a month, some of them even on the same day. <sighs> Boy, this guy's given James Patterson a run for his money. Of course, this is only possible thanks to the power of AI. Billy used AI to write his books, make the cover art, and even craft his author bio. Billy Cole is an up-and-coming author from Glasgow, Scotland, with a passion for storytelling and a keen interest in modern-day conspiracies. Inspired by renowned authors like Dan Brown, Billy writes gripping and thrilling tales that explore the mysteries of our contemporary world. With meticulous research, attention to detail, and a talent for crafting complex characters, Billy's stories delve into the underbelly of society, uncovering hidden truths and challenging readers' perceptions. Their unique voice and dedication to their craft make Billy a promising figure in the world of thrilling fiction, offering readers thrilling escapes filled with suspense, intrigue, and thought-provoking themes. Normalize being an author who doesn't write. And the cherry on top of this sh Sunday that has no chocolate, by the way, cause why would there be chocolate in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory? A lot of Billy's books push right-wing conspiracies and anti-vaccine garbage. For example, let's look at his second novel, Operation Inoculation, unveiling the a conspiratorial journey into vaccination truth's deep state conspiracy. Operation Inoculation is a gripping and thought-provoking novel that plunges readers into a world where truth, deception, and hidden agendas collide. Within the pages of this suspenseful tale, readers embark on a thrilling adventure alongside Sarah, a determined protagonist driven by an unyielding desire to uncover the secrets behind Operation Inoculation. The novel explores a range of themes, from the ethical dilemmas surrounding vaccination to the influence of fear and misinformation on public opinion, 
It delves into the complex interplay between industry, government, and regulatory bodies, shedding light on the power dynamics that shape the vaccination landscape. Throughout the story, readers are compelled to question the narratives they encounter, challenge their own beliefs, and grapple with the notion of truth in a world filled with hidden agendas. Just one huge nothing burger. <laughs> Billy's third novel, Selling Innocence, Rosie Black's Escape from Hell, makes not-so-subtle references to the QAnon theory that the Deep State, a group of powerful leaders who are also satanic PDF files, if you know what I'm saying, secretly controls the world and Donald Trump is the only one that can stop them. As if Donald Trump wouldn't be among them! Allegedly, hypothetically, in Minecraft, obviously! Allegedly, meet Rosie Black a woman whose life was forever altered when she became ensnared in the clutches of an insidious international trafficking ring. From the sun-soaked shores of Cuba, her dreams were shattered and replaced with a nightmare beyond comprehension. Bound by chains of silence and forced into a life of unspeakable horrors, Rosie's resilience and unwavering spirit emerge as her only weapons against an unyielding darkness. Within these pages, witness Rosie's transformation from victim to survivor as she navigates a treacherous landscape filled with politicians, clergymen, celebrities, and billionaires. Individuals who exploit their power and influence to perpetuate an unconscionable trade. Through her eyes, uncover the webs of complicity and the shocking revelations that threaten to topple even the highest echelons of society. I gotta say, that's some QA nonsense, am I right? <laughs> I just realized while filming that Billy and Willie originate from the same name, William. Maybe that's the real conspiracy. Once people found out that Billy specifically was behind Willie's chocolate experience, they were flooding his social media demanding refunds. After dirty deleting previous apologies, Billy released an official statement on the House of Illuminati Facebook page. I'm reaching out to address the recent cancellation of the Willie's Chocolate Experience event. First, I want to extend my sincerest apologies to each and every one of you who was looking forward to this event. I understand the disappointment appointment and frustration this has caused, and for that, I am truly sorry. It's important for me to clarify that the organization and decisions surrounding this event were solely my responsibility. I want to make it clear that anyone who was hired externally or offered their help are not affiliated with me or the company. Any use of faces can cause serious harm to those who did not have any involvement in the making of this event. In relation to the Goin Bank Hub, this was a nonprofit organization that was set during COVID to provide help and support to people in need of help, which I was responsible for. The named director's roles were focused on supporting our community and ensuring the continuation of the hub's activities without any direct involvement in the event's organization or financial decisions. For context, the Goin Bank Bank Hub was a food bank Billy co-founded, which has since been shut down. Regarding a personal matter, there will be no wedding and no wedding was funded by the ticket sales. This is a difficult time for me and I ask for your understanding and privacy. Billy was also accused of using the funds to pay for his wedding, which he adamantly denied. Regarding the refunds, I am committed to rectifying this situation. All 850 transactions will be continued to be refunded has been posted to ensure transparency and to demonstrate my commitment to making this right for everyone affected. I ask for a bit of time to process everything that has happened, my intention is to learn from this experience. Your support and understanding during this time mean the world to me. Thank you for taking the time to read this message. Sincerely, no one, I guess. And still no mention of paying the actors he hired. Great. How much do you want to bet that this apology was also written by AI? I mean, Billy hasn't written anything for himself from what we've seen, so... Why start now? If I had a nickel for every AI-generated notes app apology I've talked about, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Let's hope Billy follows through and actually gives everyone their money back, 
Based on his track record though, I'm fairly skeptical. Besides the whole scamming part, Billy should be grateful that no one got hurt because it's clear he put no thought into the health and safety of the people who attended. The warehouse was dingy and disgusting and that chocolate bridge did not look stable. In my opinion, I don't think this experience will be the last of its kind. Unfortunately, this will probably inspire other bad actors to use AI to create events and scam even more people out of money. AI is only going to get better and better, and soon it'll be difficult to decipher what's real or fake. Like, we're already seeing it happen. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think of the Willy Wonka fiasco. Please leave any and all your thoughts down below. And if there's anything in particular you'd like to see me talk about going forward, I have a Google form linked in the description where you could submit your video ideas. In honor of talking about AI again, I asked AI Jesus to make an outro for this video, so... Here we go. Like a golden ticket to a chocolate factory, we've reached the end of this video journey together. I hope our time was as delightful as a Willy Wonka candy invention. If you've had a chuckler too, remember to hit that subscribe button like you're grabbing the last chocolate bar on the shelf. Life is sweeter with laughter and a bit of whimsy, so keep spreading joy like chocolate sprinkles on an ice cream sundae. Stay tuned for more fun and surprises ahead. Until next time, may your days be filled with laughter and sweetness, just like your favorite candy treat. Also, thank you to Scentbird, and make sure you use code Annamarie55OFF at Scentbird.com to get 55% off your first box. Bye!